Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's Up With That, the show that brings you interesting people, places, cultures, and subcultures here in the South Bay, the San Francisco Bay Area, the state of California, and beyond. And tonight, what's up with unschooling? What is unschooling? And how does one child get out of school? Well, the idea of being out of school is very appealing to me. I remember going to Catholic school, the beatings for peeing in the class or putting an egg on someone's chair. I mean, that's harmless, right? But the best of all was when we put a soiled diaper in the nun's desk drawer. That was a beating worth to remember. But you know what? The idea of not going to school, surfing, having more time to hang out in the beach, that's appealing. So what's up with unschooling? Well, tonight we're gonna to learn about what is unschooling from an unschooling mom. Please welcome Ari Solovyova. I got that pretty close. Hi. So What's you were a surfer. I knew that. That's I knew right. That. Yeah, I looked at you and said, bushy, bushy, blonde hairdo. That's right. <laughs> we were singing that all day in the car. Uh -huh. It's fun. <laughs> Check it out. So what is unschooling? Um, unschooling, uh, in a few words, is uh, not trying to uh, make your child do what's good for them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I need a mom like you, okay? <laughs> you know, you can get a lot of things done if you uh, just, um, you know, you can, you can uh, make them do things, but you should always use I statements, you know? Uh -huh. And you think about yourself right. and interests of the family and things. And, uh -huh. and children are very cooperative. And you yeah. can get, but if you start saying, you know, do it you're because right. it's good for you, for your brain, for your this, uh -huh. for that, for your future, right. then you pr pretty quickly lose them. And, uh -huh, and that's so uh -huh. typical. I mean, you're talking like a, a California school teacher because that's <laughs> kind of the way it is. You know, in California schools right now, they teach to test, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's basically that's what they're doing. Now you need to because this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they're under all that stress. So how did you get interested in unschooling? Um, actually, um, when I was in great to school. <laughs> uh, me and my husband, we were, uh, well, I guess I was uh, getting a baby bug or something. I was looking at the parenting shelves and I just mm -hmm, happened mm -hmm. upon this book yeah. called uh, Teach Your Own by John Holt. And mm -hmm. I knew nothing about this. So um, I just started reading it aloud um, to my husband and mm -hmm. we just said, wow, let's have a baby. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> we were so excited. Like, we have to do it now, but we don't have a child. Wow, what are we going to cool. do? <laughs> so then we had um, Veronica. She's 13 now. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a great time. We, we moved to California soon after that. We went to graduate school at IU in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. Um, uh -huh. So then we moved here and we did a lot of alternative things because <laughs> uh -huh. everybody was doing it. So uh -huh. I got to do a home birth <laughs> uh -huh. and a water birth and all, right. you know, all kinds of uh -huh. um, alternative healing and uh -huh. all, you know. You got into the school. California <laughs> groove, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. just got to do it all. <laughs> uh -huh. So it sounds like you ha you already have an inclination to, to yeah, get into I something that's a little yeah, bit more free I, thinking. I think I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. So how did, how did unschooling start? Um, uh, the movement started, I guess, um, well, there were several, um, I guess the largest part of the movement started with John Holt's um, writings uh, mm -hmm. and um, also Ivan Illich, he wrote Deschooling Society. Mm -hmm. It was a bestseller in the 60s mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. maybe still is now. It's probably really popular <laughs> with the school system. Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and uh, John Holt um, wrote a number of books. He was a math teacher um, and then he uh, started actually thinking that something wasn't going right with the kids, that they weren't really mm -hmm. that much interested in the subject, but mm -hmm. they were really interested in what he was thinking at any given mm -hmm. point in time. Mm -hmm. And they were looking always into his eyes and trying to guess uh -huh. what he wanted them to say. Right. And they were just like, like little not, robots, right? You know, yeah. like it's kind of funny. It's like, what is wrong with them? Uh -huh. And he just kept, you know, taking notes. And then he published these notes and commentaries mm -hmm. that in a book called How Children Learn. Right. And then he wrote another one called How Children Fail. Mm -hmm. And they're both required reading in many, many courses in mm -hmm. schools of education across the mm -hmm. country. And, and then he finally, at some point, he wrote um, 
Well, he wrote a lot about alternative schools. So this one, What Do I Do Monday, is mm -hmm. for teachers in free schools. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually has a lot of great advice on, uh, it focuses on filmmaking and sound recording as great arts of present and future, and that should be given a lot of attention in school. Right, well, uh, that's, <laughs> that brings up a, a, a mood point, because with budget cuts and all these kinds of things, those are the things that kids, they have no access to these things. Yeah. I mean, very few kids, really, when you think about it. Yeah, and I think it's so big for mm -hmm. modernity, and I mean, it's, it's the big art of today, I think, that right. all the talented people are all uh -huh. in filmmaking. I know, when they go in the computer lab, they're not working on anything that is really something that they want to do, it's something that's already been predetermined by the state, so they're really in the computer lab having no fun. You know, mm -hmm. I can think of my computer lab and with the, a really, no offense if she's watching, crabby teacher. Grabby, I mean, it's like those poor kids. I'd hate to be in that class. I'd be like, yeah, no, yeah, I don't yeah. want to go to computer it's lab. It's like, you know how they say, oh, kids learn everything about computers. You don't have to teach them. No, just introduce required subjects in school. You know computer education. And very soon kids will say, okay, I'm not yeah, touching I'm the computer. To to, <laughs> well, know, maybe it's good. <laughs> <to that. laughs> so, you know, they, they should um, prohibit them from reading and make mm -hmm. them um, do video games all day. And then, yeah. then you'll see people reading everywhere. <laughs> <That's> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but so John Holt is, is actually, uh, he writes amazingly well, like very... He was a great speaker. He was constantly invited to, mm -hmm. uh, to talk everywhere. And, um, he's just very, very easy to read. And so at one point he wrote this, teach your own. So he thought it was, was really good for families to just take charge of their kids' right. education like as much as it was possible in every individual state and, and uh, you know, fight for legal rights. And it yeah. currently it's illegal in every state. Mm -hmm. So and a lot of people <laughs> made this possible. <laughs> but yeah. It's a lot easier for people to do it now, obviously, yeah. than it was. So the book is called How Children Fail. So how do you think children fail? <laughs> um, so, well, in this, I mean, it's an old book. <laughs> so in, in he talks about s how children fail in school, how they, you know, fail, um, fail to accomplish what they, what they should be because uh -huh. they follow some kind of fake goals, you know, right. things that are not really their goals. Uh -huh. Their goal is to get an education. And, yeah. and the teacher's goal is to... Right. Make sure they pass tests. You know, they make sure they, uh -huh. they can't they can't follow every individual child's Right, so he's kind of following like um, the mm -hmm. theory of seven intelligences, where each kid's not born with the same yeah. intelligence. Yeah, yeah, that's Howard part Gardner, of it. Yeah, Howard Gardner. Yeah, know. yeah. So he he talks a lot about children's individuality and mm -hmm. how you know it's yeah. it's just plain impossible logistically. Right. Um, yeah. What do you do with the child that's <laughs> more musically inclined than analytically inclined? Yeah. They're yeah, set so up for failure. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> sort of I can understand idea. that. So, um, how did you learn about the techniques of unschooling? Um, <laughs> well, I guess I, I, it was easy here, easy enough, because so, so many people do it. <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, you it talk. really surprises me <laughs> in California because they're so tight on money that you think they'd be, you know, in these truancy laws and also, but we'll get into that in a, in a while. But <laughs> yeah. go ahead. So, um, well, <laughs> they haven't really gotten, <laughs> thankfully, into checking everybody. But on the other hand, the law is not, I mean, the law just says you file. Most people file um, form every year. Now mm -hmm. you can do it on the Internet. And then you're supposed to, you know, keep certain records. But, you know, it's vague enough that it's actually mm -hmm. really doable. For yeah, that doesn't <laughs> surprise me in California. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, well, they need the people to staff <laughs> that, okay? And they yeah. don't have the people to staff that. So as long as it's <laughs> just a bad economy, it's going to be very vague. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you mentioned the techniques. So I guess um, there's a lot of books and websites. And um, once you read them, you know, you search for unschooling on Google <laughs> nowadays. So you find a, a number of really informative. Uh, one really good magazine is called Life Learning. It's, it's published in Canada, actually. But there's a lot of American writers writing in there. And, and then a lot of books. Um, one author's um, name is Grace Llewellyn. I haven't mm -hmm. brought any of her books, but she was very influential for me. And she runs a Not Back to School camp in Oregon, and she publishes. Mm -hmm. I just love these names. Art. The Not Back to School <laughs> camp. That's great. Uh, yeah. Why did my mom send me to that? <laughs> well, um, in any case, so, so the, a parent um, uh, just has to become something different. So it's unschooling is really different from the rest of homeschooling, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a subset, and there's n really no clear line between, you know, the, like people who say, oh, we do um, unschooling for everything except math, you know, because mm -hmm. they're just like really anxious about math and they want to, you know, for whatever reason, they want to do more structured, like tutoring and some. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, a parent becomes a facilitator and a guide and a like, information seeker. You just constantly research what's available and you mm -hmm. constantly see what yeah. your child is interested in. It's also called child-led learning. Mm -hmm. I kind of like those other terms, community-based education, mm -hmm. <laughs> in other yeah. words, world schooling, mm -hmm. life learning. <laughs> hey, we're going to look at some photos mm -hmm. that you've taken of some of the, your kids in this process and mm -hmm. we will um, check it out. So. Why don't you explain a couple of things that we just saw in those photos? So what's going on there? Uh -huh. um, well, um, there's a lot of cooking going on. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. um, so it's really big for <laughs> both of my kids, and especially mm -hmm. now for Ivan. The, the young. You know, it's amazing. Cooking is one of the best math lessons you can it do. It is, definitely, definitely. You know, and Food and money. And yeah. Man, what else do you need? I mean, exactly. <laughs> for early grades, math. Yeah. I mean, money. Kids love money. Well, you know they do. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Everyone you know, loves money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so for younger kids, it's, you know, coins. Coins are the best manipulative. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're always right. readily available. Pennies. Mm -hmm. They put them in their little categories. <laughs> and you put, you put them in rows, you put them in categories, and, and mm -hmm. you know, you, you talk, you give them right. an allowance. That's so pretty common. you don't common. need to buy any expensive things. You, uh, you just be yeah. more that's, creative. That's part of it. That there's a lot of um, thought going into how to manage with small resources, and mm -hmm. there's like a big overlap with the <laughs> intentional, simple living community uh -huh. and, the, you know, yeah. people who try to do a lot on a right. um, small budget. Anyway, because uh, it's uh, one parent has to stay at home, or you have to have staggered or something uh -huh. in, in other ways it's obvious someone has right. to do this all with the children so yeah. you have to sacrifice part of your income but it's yeah. amazing how much you can do still mm -hmm. I would think uh, it would bring your family a lot closer together too. Uh, yeah it does and so I um, um, I have a 13 year old and a four year old so it's it's wonderful watching them together and the mm -hmm. older child <laughs> you mm -hmm. know reads to the mm -hmm. younger and, and plays and explains mm -hmm. things and <laughs> Well, that um, wasn't like my together. family. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I they just—they have this—they have this time to spend together, which is which mm -hmm. is good. I mean, like at this time, it, it has been different, you know, at different mm -hmm. times in American history and you know, right. in other countries. But n uh, at this point in time, there's just way too much homework and way too many activities, and you know, it's it's not only homeschooling or unschooling literature. Right. There's this *Hurried Child* by um, yeah. David Delkin oh, yeah, and yeah. other literature. Oh, yeah. the very so. Yeah. So anyway, there's just the you know, out too child. much. People are stressed out, and, the and they don't have time out. to connect with parents or with family. Mm -hmm. And so one big thing about uh, unschooling <laughs> is trying to, mm -hmm. you know, just just this well, time together. I give together, you a scenario of a, of a child that I uh, just met at a school that I'm working at, and the child said, "Okay, so," uh, and I thought, "How stressful of a, a routine you have!" So before he goes to school. He has like an early morning swim class. Then he, then his driver who drives him to school. Okay, got it. All right, <laughs> we're not talking about the ones living on a, you know, a budget in here. Then you know he goes to school. Then after school he goes to Kumon for tutoring. And then after Kumon he goes to art lessons or something. And I'm like, dang, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to do in one day. Yeah. I mean, I used to play in the beach and collect seashells, uh -huh. you know, and then we'd count the seashells. That was That's our laughing. Mm -hmm. So, so here's a, a question. Why, why in the back of your mind didn't you send your kids to school? What was it? What's your objection with that? The, your main, we kind of talked about mm -hmm. it a little bit, but mm -hmm. what, 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 what's the main objection to mm -hmm. the school system? Uh, for me personally, um, 
I, it wasn't really an objection to anything so much as the desire to do what those people were doing. Okay. <laughs> it was really more of a posi positive focus because mm -hmm. I found so much literature. Because I guess it happened, um, you know, now there are just so many people doing it and so much happening. And I'm like, wow, I want to be part of it, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> more than. Yeah, but another really interesting thing in this area, there's so many. Um, alternative schools they're kind of like uh -huh. unschool schools they're right, like open yeah. classroom things uh -huh. you know Charter schools and, 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 and I just love this and we, we used we went to this place called lead center for a while which mm -hmm. was really like an alternative you could do full-time school you could do part-time school you could do enrichment classes mm -hmm. in the same place you know mm -hmm. like with, with the same teacher so you can pop your head in and, and say so hi yeah yeah <laughs> and you could hang out with people and there's a community and they do field uh -huh. trips together and stuff and, and there are places like that and you know they're yeah. popping up new ones so right. I'm totally for it I mean I'm not yeah. you know school is not like some big blue like no, I mean uh -huh. the schools and schools, and there's lots, lots of improvement going. So let me ask you: Do your kids ever complain about not going to school? Uh -huh. uh, you know, they're, they're very. I definitely say you can go anytime you want. They have school-going friends; they talk to them. So mm -hmm. Veronica might consider it more, you know. Mm -hmm. But so far, she had her best friend goes to school, and she talks to him and says, "You know, I think I don't want to go." <laughs> really? And she actually has; she's now more mature. She's thirteen, uh -huh. so I've been getting a lot of feedback. You know, because yeah. when they're young, you don't really know. Right. So she's been saying a lot, like, "Mom, I'm so happy. I'm uh -huh. just." And so I've never done anything I didn't have. You know, she has, but she yeah. doesn't remember it, which is good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> never well, now yeah, like, she's a kid, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you know, it's great. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm doing things that I love. And she has several very strong interests, and she has a lot of time to pursue them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a big focus here. I think it's the time. You know, it allows for that, like Howard Gardner says, the seven intelligence, allows them to pursue all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, the, it's starting you know, to sound time. pretty good. <laughs> Think about going to Catholic school. I mean, you want to talk about being rigid. It was like, you know, if you were one second off key, you were in the somebody's yeah. office. Yeah, yeah. I know they had my name on the wall. Uh. <laughs> the other one I carved under the bench, but that's all right. <laughs> so how do you keep the focus of the kids on learning? Um, I must say that I do certain things that maybe other unschoolers don't do, <laughs> or some people wouldn't call it unschooling. Mm. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of there's there's some fighting going on about the term. Uh -huh. But for for me, the main thing is, um, you know, I I'm structuring our environment. That's okay. what I say about it. That I s make certain things less accessible. For example, I turned off YouTube in our house, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, for all of our sakes, because mm -hmm. I'm a uh, BBC period drama addict. Mm -hmm. And once I get on those historicals, I just can't make myself do anything else. Mm -hmm. I just sit there and I just watch. Uh -huh. you know, like yeah. And you know, some people are not that addicted to the, uh -huh. to the screen, but I am. And my daughter said she was too. So we discussed and we said, you know what, we have Google, uh, Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. so we can always go in the clubhouse. We live in the condominium complex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there are different arrangements, for, but for us it works. That if we want YouTube, we go to the clubhouse and we watch it there. Mm -hmm. But it's not in the house. Right. So that way, we mm -hmm. and we don't have a TV. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but we check out lots of movies from the library, mm -hmm. and you know we watch movies a lot, and we mm -hmm. we we try to keep you know on the internet there are yeah. other other sources. Right. Of, so we. We're definitely in touch with media. <laughs> uh -huh. So then we'll just talk about the internet because that would, if you don't have a TV and you have an internet, uh, how do you manage that with the kids on the uh, internet? Oh, we have we have internet. We just firewalled uh, YouTube. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> meaning like managing so that they're not going to certain things like. Uh, I don't know. I'm just. I guess I'm in. Um, I spend so much time with them, uh -huh. and they never show any. Uh, yeah. They haven't yet shown uh -huh. any interest in really yeah. like separating too much or they mm -hmm. they do a lot of activities but they would just constantly I feel like I'm in complete touch with whatever's going on and mm -hmm. uh, one interesting thing about my 13 year old is she's she's kind of maybe she has seen you know things you know with her friends or something right. and I you know she's very mature and she's able uh -huh. to process it but you know she got like kind of scared at one point and she said now I've, I invited her to watch some really good R-rated movies and I said, okay mm -hmm. I'll tell you when to close your eyes you know you really I said no I'm not gonna watch no is this PG-13 uh -huh. okay <laughs> no yeah. what does no it's rated PG-13 but look it has all this violence I'm not watching uh -huh. well, like, wow. oh. <laughs> that's pretty good she's so making those choices I I so, so maybe it did happen because she did see something scary and they you know uh -huh. and they but kind of in principle we talk so much that they and mm -hmm. talking and help her it process her like. emotions. All right, Thank we're going to take a short commercial break okay. and we'll be back to talk more on unschooling. Okay. It's <laughs> very interesting. Hi, my name is Madison Dress and I love being an Aquamaid because it inspires me to work hard and achieve my dreams. 
Hi, my name is Elle Bilma, and I love being an Aquamaid because if you work hard and achieve your goals, you can go places. Go, go Big Red! All right, we're back here with Allie, and um, how do you know that your children remember what they learn? Um, yes, interesting question. <laughs> One that people ask a lot. <laughs> Allie, excuse um, me. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, you know, it pops up all the time, like they... Because when you spend a lot of time with them, mm -hmm. it's easier. You know, when you don't spend much time, then you don't really know. You know, you only yeah. have this much time to, to ask to ask them some questions. You know, and maybe they won't want to answer you or something. You know, but when we talk, when you talk to them all the time, and right. they, you have a good relationship, they want to tell you stuff. They mm -hmm. say, "Wow, look, I read this magazine, and you know, mm -hmm. this and this and that." And, so know, they're not yeah. tested. Do um, no, <laughs> okay. you you don't have to test in the state mm -hmm. of California. <laughs> really? In other places you do, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, I think you, California's you, got all the benefits, it's, huh? It's great. It's, you know, but you know what? It's interesting. Some uh, kids really like being tested, actually, mm -hmm. I found. So my daughter loves taking quizzes and multiple choice things. You know, mm -hmm. she ha She's on all those virtual world websites. Right. And, and some of them, <laughs> one of her current favorites is, is uh, Big Animal on Campus, mm -hmm. where you like put your pet's picture there. But mm -hmm. then they, they have a lot of very educational stuff, which is actually mm -hmm. really pretty good, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, math, even middle school math, and lots of middle school stuff. Um, and she just she just does mm -hmm. those quizzes like all the time. She's like hooked on them. Yeah. And she downloads things to her iPhone, and you know. And I, I see a lot of other kids who are like that. So mm -hmm. as long as testing is not connected to your you know value as a person or right. someone going to compare you, you know, it's kind of fun. You know, it's a yeah. game. So she does a lot of those, and she actually loved yeah. worksheets as a child. You know, and mm -hmm. I never suggested them, or you know, they were just like any other book, and textbooks mm -hmm. are like any other books. We definitely have textbooks in the house, yeah. and we have worksheets, and mm -hmm. uh, so she loves going through them once in a while, and my youngest does too. And <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, and I just yeah, when I talk to them, they might not know certain things. If I see like some gaps, or we play Trivial Pursuit a lot. Okay. <laughs> we actually play board games a lot. Yeah. So and man, really and man, do wow. I ever have gaps in my learning? Uh -huh. Oh man, you know. Yeah, I should tell you, like <laughs> this is a cool sounded schooling thing going on here. <laughs> anyway, but but you know, like it's it's really interesting to ask yourself, how much do mm -hmm. you know? You know, there's this program, uh, um, fifth, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Right. Yeah, we have that board game. Uh huh. So, and you know, my gosh. So are you grow, smarter than a fifth grader? I, 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 you know, I'm not so sure now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be like, oh. I like. think that show's kind of rigged, though, because they have some of these fifth grade questions that I'm like, yeah, was it yeah, really? I have that like in a college course or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't know. You know, I have a master's degree and I took like a smattering of classes in, in mm -hmm. uh, humanities and some math and programming. You know, I have a pretty well-rounded yeah. education, I thought. But I do, you know, like a lot of facts that I don't know. But mm -hmm. the whole thing, one of the things in unschooling is it's not about memorizing facts. It's mm -hmm. about learning how to learn and learning how to research, right. learning how to use the library, the internet, uh -huh. you know, knowing where to go for uh, any that's particular question. That's a key question. point. You just hit a real key point uh, there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really important. In the so, so what happens when you don't know the answer to something? I mean, and you, you don't understand what they're asking you. Mm -hmm. Do you trust the internet to give them the correct <laughs> answer? Well, I don't uh, always because <laughs> mm -hmm. I I have written a number of theses and uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I have those research techniques. <laughs> uh -huh. But I think that Wikipedia, for example, is a really pretty trustworthy resource. I, I mm -hmm. mean, in a lot of fields, yeah. it's like, uh, and there, there are some, you know, places on the internet and, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can subscribe to really good resources on the internet. Right. So uh, if you just look up and look at random pages, then no. If yeah. you kind of know how to pick and choose, right. then sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, part, uh, of the, part of the school experience, I mean, part of the reason that uh, kids do go to school is the social aspects. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a, a, a daughter that's 13, you're talking mm -hmm. about social aspects, mm -hmm. right? So how do you deal with that with your kids? Uh -huh. um, so um, again, we have this amazing advantage of so many people doing it mm -hmm. <laughs> and homeschooling, you know, right. and people don't really talk about who's unschooling and who's doing what. So mm -hmm. all the home and homeschoolers you know, homeschooling movement is huge in the Bay Area. Right. And so we have park days, we have field trips, we have classes, mm -hmm. and there's just too much. <laughs> my, my daughter says, like, okay, I'm going to take a break. And mm -hmm. <laughs> she's a bit of an introvert, okay. and she really doesn't need so much. So like it's kind, it's with kind of a, a community has formed around this whole movement. Yeah, there's a big community. And there's where they go for their social activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and plus, um, I, I mean, a lot of people in... Um, 
I, of course, do not ever say, you know, don't hang out with kids who go to school. <laughs> uh -huh. In fact, you, you seek out the, you know, whatever. Right. Um, so, so she goes to a lot of classes through cities of Palo Alto and Mountain View, and mm -hmm. she meets like kids special there. Classes and she, and um, uh, in Richmond, you know, in right. Richmond, it's, it's all day in Richmond for us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and then... Um, but you must be traveling around all the time. But huh? you know what? There's incredible... I mean, we just, I guess we're just so lucky because we live, in, you know, there's so much available in Mountain View, Palo Alto, Los Altos, mm -hmm. you know, San Jose yeah. maybe. I mm -hmm. like don't really like to drive too much. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people drive like a lot for the, you mm -hmm. know, they see this, they want this particular class and nothing mm -hmm. else, you know, will satisfy them. I say, hey, this is a really good resource. You know, K right. K <laughs> MTV yeah. is a really good resource or whatever. I really want to use the local resources uh -huh. yeah. as much well, as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, I mean, if the movement's growing, I'm sure there are a lot of things to do um, for the end schooler. It's very fascinating, I must say, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. What is the largest challenge for you to keep all this together? Uh -huh. We're getting close to the end of the show. What, what's been the largest challenge, or what's the most challenging aspect of home of unschooling? Uh, for me, the most challenging aspect is being a good parent. Uh, what's it called? Twenty-four by seven, because mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's just very demanding. It's just. Mm. You know, not having enough rest, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, because you know you people and do. You percent of the other Americans. People tell me, you know, like yeah, you get some rest. You know, some moms get some rest. They send kids away to school and they just plop down on the couch mm -hmm. and they get some rest. Right. <laughs> but I'm with them, you know, all the time. And so right. a challenge is to, to find to to find that, you know, to pay attention to myself as a person and all this stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> they yeah. say in for know. moms in general, uh -huh. right? So I treat I'm yourself out, yeah. you take care of yourself. Yeah. All that. But for me, it's also uh, a lot of it is, you know, not like just take time off, but try to focus on my creative things. And it's very important. Part big part of unschooling is modeling for your child right. that you are, you know, I'm not just a yeah. mom hanging uh -huh. out here, you know, right. <laughs> especially for my modeling daughter. Is so important <laughs> for kids. I anyway. really I want to be, you know, show them that I'm a very creative person and they want to do my projects and they really want to take time mm -hmm. for that and they and they haven't mm -hmm. been lately but mm -hmm. i'm planning to do better all right all <laughs> inclusive okay well that's all the time we have for what's up with that thank you so much right, thank for you. coming on the show and informing our audience about unschooling and, and offering our viewers uh, another choice in in the education system you know that you don't have to necessarily be trapped in a school environment you know but again they're going to need somebody like you that's going to be at home all the time and mm -hmm. and willing to to put in the investments, you know, so I give you my hats off to you. I was really mm -hmm. interested in the fact that there was going to be no school. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for coming. And to our viewing audience, as ever, if you're walking down the street and you see something interesting and you wonder to yourself, hey, what's up with that? Tune into our show, What's Up With That? And maybe you'll find exactly what you're looking for. We'll see you next week on What's Up With That? Good night, everybody.